You might think you know what an American English accent sounds like, but we will just see about that. Amer America? America. Did you see that, America? You see that, America. You are going to hear seven fascinating accents from around the US, but that does not mean you will know what they are, especially not the dialect one. So listen carefully, write your guesses in the comments, but you have to be fast. You ready? They're going to be at Roots Chris cutting buttonholes, pacing up and down like a walk and Charlie have a conniption fit. The seventh word smacker, show me the kern, daddy. If you are used to saying insurance instead of insurance, well, you might be quite sure of this American accent. I just as soon drop a bomb on a mall or God forbid flush them down a toilet with nothing more than a passing thought. Some of the main immigrant cultures that influenced this accent were West African, German, Italian and Irish, especially those last two. But that's not all. Back in the 1700s, the area was a major hub for immigration and the the first colony here was actually French. You'll hear that in the slang. If we're excited or if we're angry, that's definitely gonna give you a cue of how we're feeling. Now I might buy me a house somewhere and doing like that there, but I ain't gonna never leave from uptown. This is where I know, you know. Earl, yeah. Get a can of Earl. No, Earl is the Chalmette, the sewer. That was a zoo. You got it yet? Here's a big clue. There's one feature of this accent that's so distinct, it even has a name. They call it the Yat accent, as in, where you at? And a yat is a person from New Orleans. Now don't hate on me for pronouncing it New Orleans. That's just the way that we say it in my neck of the woods. And then the two that you should never ever say will be Nolans and New Orleans. Who gets a pass on New Orleans? British people. Exactly, I claim my free pass. Here are some typical New Orleans words and phrases. Feel free to share other good ones you know in the comments below. So the French claimed Louisiana in 1682, then for a while it was given to Spain and then back to France. But French people didn't want to move to this area, so France sent a bunch of their death row prisoners to populate Louisiana. They were forced to marry in a mass wedding ceremony, shackled two by two and put onto a ship. How's that for a story? But there is a misconception that New Orleans is a southern drawl. It is not. It's also not the same thing as the local Cajun English. And if you ever wondered why this accent has a strong similarity to accents heard in New York, well, New Orleans got the exact same combination of immigrant groups. Come on, let's get going. Hoi toy on the sand soil. Last night at waterfall, night like moonshine, no fish. Where you pulling my rock wood? Get a going. Ever heard people speaking like this? It's an endangered accent, so enjoy it while you can. Ever since I can remember, somebody not from here was called a Dean Batter. Many of the first speakers came from Southwest England and Ireland. The most interesting part, though, is the pirates. That's right. In the 1700s, pirates hid away from soldiers on these islands. So their ancestors were pirates, Native Americans and English, Irish, Scots, sailors. They have a long history of isolation from the mainland. In fact, the dialects developed in almost complete isolation for over 250 years. Another fascinating thing about this American accent is that it's a rather archaic form of English known as tidewater raising. And a similar thing occurs in Canadian English. I'm talking about, of course, high tider English. If you want to hear it, head for the Outer Banks Islands of North Carolina. Back 30 years ago, you used to get the prices we're getting now. And it cost you triple to, to go out to fish them. Cost me over 300 a day to just to go out. The communities live in just a few small coastal towns like Ocracoke and Tangier Island. Their unique way of speaking has a bit of a bounce to it. And in linguistics, the way they pronounce their vowels is called goat fronting. Words like about, mouth, and house become about, mouth, house, although <laughs> I think I'll leave it to the professionals to pronounce it. <laughs> High tide on the sound side. High tide on the sound side. <laughs> High tide on the sound side. Here are some local words. Now, your turn. You know the drill. Oh, well, because supposedly, supposedly, he just got a boat. That's ridiculous. This delightful accent is influenced by five decades of immigration from Cuba, from the Caribbean, from Central America. Way back in the year 1900, the area was seen as a swamp, and for that reason, it was sparsely populated. I mean, who wants to live in a swamp? No, because like the thing is that the thing is that the thing is that I mean, the thing is that like 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 that's the thing. The thing is that the wonderful climate and growing Spanish community made it a hub for people fleeing Latin America, and then it also drew non-Spanish-speaking Caribbeans. And when you look on a map, well, this area actually is in. 
the Caribbean. <laughs> they haven't seen that. I went to the club and it's like around the corner, and then we came back, and then we're looking and we're going, but it's and then they fix their hair. Florida's most well known dialect is unique to this city, Miami. Without a doubt, Miami sounds have an affinity with Spanish pronunciation. After all, English has 20 different vowel sounds, while Spanish has only five. So there's a special rhythm and vibrancy in Miami English that you just don't hear in other parts of the US. And as we saw, lots and lots of hand gestures. Another hand gesture is this, which is me simulating someone hitting the like button on this video. Because when you hit the like button, when you like the video, it actually really helps out the channel. And I'm very, very grateful for your, for your support. So please hit that like button. And of course, if you like videos like this, then you should probably subscribe to the channel too, because I make videos like this all the time. You want to take all that and bring it home. Bring it down. Calm it down a little bit. And now for something completely different. The accent's going to slow right down. Think burning hot region. Slower delivery. We have about 190 goats, um, 180 chickens, about the same number of ducks, um, Hanoverian horses, you name it, we've got it. In the mid 1700s, wealthy British traders living in this part of America started dropping the R sound from their speech as a distinction of their class. But the rural classes, many still working on plantations, still pronounce the R, and you can hear that difference to this day. Anywhere where it's so hot, we don't just open the mouth and let the sound hang out there to dry. Mm. The southern accent is known for melodious sounds and vowels lengthened to a drawn. What's up with pen and pin? They both sound like pin to me. Of course, there are different southern accents, seven in fact, and we cannot forget the beautiful southern aristocracy thing. Do you think that was kind to bring your good looking brother down here just to break my poor simple country girl's heart? Aren't accents fascinating? For me, accents are to language what salt and pepper is to food. And this is especially true if you're learning a foreign language, which after all is what this channel is all about. And if you are learning a foreign language and you want to improve your accent so that you can just fit in better with whatever foreign language community matters most to you. The most important thing is to get feedback from a native teacher because certain things you just have to have pointed out to you. And when it comes to accents, it can be quite difficult to figure it out on your own. So actually having an actual human being point out what sounds natural and what doesn't really is the smart path to improving and sounding more natural in your foreign language. When I want to get help from an expert language teacher, I head to Languatalk. Now, Languatalk is my absolute favorite place to find tutors from all over the world. First, you take lessons online over Zoom so you can fit them in at home whenever you're free. But also, Languatalk has a great system where you can filter tutors by time slot, so you can find people who are available when you are to avoid that annoying back and forth that can sometimes happen with scheduling. But most of all, the tutors are highly vetted, meaning I don't waste my time with tutors who don't know what they're doing. All around, it's the best place to get help from real tutors with your language learning. Now, we are not getting paid for this sponsorship at all, but full disclosure, we are actually investors in Languatalk. That's how much we like them. And if you'd like to give Languatalk a try, you can get a free trial lesson. It just gets better and better. Just click the link in the description below and try it out today. We got snowmobiles, we got hill sliding, That's you know, it, it's a whole different season and you love to enjoy, we're outdoor people, so we mm -hmm. love to enjoy the outdoors and, and we love the four seasons. I bet you've been waiting for this one. The settlers who came here in the 1800s were, wait for it, Finnish, French Canadian, Cornish, Scandinavian and German. In fact, most of the descendants of Finns who settled in America are still right here in this very spot. Hey! That's a good idea. <laughs> to this day, they use a German Scandinavian ya ja instead of yes. And just to make the accent even cooler, there are a lot of Algonquian speaking descendants among them as they were the first people here. You have to work for it. You go out there and you work your job and you pay big bucks or you just go out the wood in the woods and cut down trees Sweat and a little. have a lot of fun, a little workout, you know, it's a good family time. Anyway, this very distinct dialect has its own name. It's called Yupa or Yuparese from the acronym UP. Upper Peninsula. To be a Yuper, you had to be born a Yuper and Really, if you aren't one, you really can't understand. You just know it. And we are talking about, of course, the upper Midwestern accent. He went to Green Bay with the with the guys uh, bowling, and he was at a restaurant, and the waitress came over to one of the other fellows, and she said, what country is he from? And here he is, a genuine youper. One very recognizable thing that they do is end their sentences with a, and there's also a lot of then, there, that, instead of then, there, that. But what can you tell us about this dialect? Let us know in the comments. Did you eat them baked beans? Yeah, yeah. They were awful good. So take down that road there. Once you get down to where uh, Michael crashed his truck into that tree, you're gonna want to take a laugh. There's a party in the pit tonight. 
and you're gonna go down out into the woods. You'll pass Uncle Bucky's. Once you get out there, you'll wanna take a ride. Spring? No. Mud season. Any Stephen King fans out there? Now, I don't need to tell you where this is. You definitely know. In this part of America, clearly the perfect setting for horror stories, there's a universal agreement that goes something like, Hey, yeah. Is that right? Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. They also speak like they have no R's except at the end of words, well, they shouldn't be in the first place. So you get what linguists call the intrusive R. Intrusive meaning it shouldn't be there, it's intruded, like Lisa, yoga, pasta. What is this? But they say the strongest version is down east. You have to have kind of a <clears throat> in your sound because most tend to smoke or tend to have some kind of gruff activity that'll make their voice a little bit more gruff. So I said, say these words, eSport at center. And what are we talking about? It is the awesome accent of Maine. Maine stretches from Boston North to New Hampshire and all along the Maine coast, but kind of isolated from the rest of New England. And that's all it takes to end up with your own accent. We don't have dinner, we have supper. We ain't busy, we're out straight. And if we're really busy, we're right out straight. There's a similar origin story here to Canada's. It's an early French influence along with 17th century English and a bit of Scots-Irish thrown in. For a long time, the local accents were stigmatized as working class. And because of this, the thick accent disappeared. But I hear it's in a bit of a renaissance right now. And I hope that's true. And now guess what? That's what everybody want to know now, how we cook with damn bone and make things so good, like the neck bone. Now they tell you now though, eat too much because you cholesterol and all them things like that. But back then we ain't getting up with no cholesterol, it was good eating, you see? Now this amazing and totally unique way of speaking developed in the secluded rice fields during the Atlantic slave trade. Clam is a person, place, or thing who don't fulfill their obligation that say they gonna do something. They say they gonna do it, they ain't never come through. So if you say you gonna pick up the groceries from the grocery store, you ain't never pick it up. You flam. That boy flam. You ain't show up to work, you say you been coming? That boy flam. Mm -mm. You flam. The English they learned from the Anglo plantation owners was modified by their many African languages and the accents of lower class English and Irish servants. I know what you call me for that for. Man, I bet none did that. Man, the boy ain't tell you I did. I, I, I been going get him. Yeah. Nowadays, it's mostly African Americans who speak it, those living on the Atlantic seaboard of Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Come here, go ahead. See, you hot out ya. You too hot out ya. <laughs> look, look, that girl ain't a spool up. I ain't even to be talking to y'all boy regular day. I could be talking to y'all like this, okay? And if you did a lot of camping as a kid, you might know the campfire song, Kumbaya. Who doesn't? The song name is in this dialect. In fact, it's more than a dialect. It's an American English Creole called Gullah. Now, Gullah refers to both the dialect and those who speak it. Gullah's basic universal negator is Ain from ain't, and they use an awful lot of multiple negatives. But you know what's also fascinating? I'll tell you what, it's how the US military teach their people foreign languages. They have a crazy system with impressive results, and I did a deep dive into exactly how their method works, and that video is right here. <laughs> 